In this lesson, we will learn how to use Cutting Master 4. Cutting Master 4 is a plugin app for Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. It basically allows vector designs to be sent from either Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw to a GraphTech cutter. Let's start by opening Cutting Master 4. This is done by clicking on the File pull-down menu, hovering over Cutting Master 4, and then selecting Cut Plot. This opens the Cut Plot window. Let's take a moment and get familiar with the Cut Plot window and review some of its options. First, take notice of the white area on the right side of the window. This is the Media Display area. It basically represents your media size relative to the size of the graphic here. If we take a closer look at the bottom of the Media Display area, there are these little arrows. These indicate the direction the media will move on the cutter. In other words, it would look like this if it were going through the cutter. And the media would be feeding through the cutter in this direction. When values are adjusted on the left part of the window, you will see the effect in the media display area on the right. For instance, if job size were increased, it would adjust the job design in the media display area. Think of it as a preview area of how the job design will lay out or cut on the actual media. Up at the top are tabs that categorize options according to common cutting tasks. For instance, we are in the General tab. The tab next to it has options pertaining to layers. These are the layers that are used in Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. Currently, it shows only one layer because our design only has one layer. Alternatively, if our design has several layers created in Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, they would be listed here. If we click on By Color, it displays the two colors that are part of the design, blue and black. Here we can cut the design by color. In other words, we could load black vinyl in the cutter, send the black color, then once it is cut, we could load blue vinyl and send that color. Colors and layers listed here will cut in order. The top color or layer will cut first, followed by the lower colors or layers. Any color or layer can be disabled, which will prevent it from being sent to the cutter. To the right of the colors are these buttons that will pause the cutter prior to cutting that color or layer. The next tab is used for paneling our job designs when they need to be split up or paneled due to the size of the job. Let's go over a few of the options. Notice within the media display area, there is a thick black rectangle around the graphic. This indicates that there is only one panel to be cut as one piece and that everything in the black rectangle will be cut. But if we were to grab the top and drag it down, we can resize the panel to exactly what we want to cut. In other words, if we were to cut this job design now, it would cut everything within the black outline or panel and nothing else. This is helpful when we only need a certain portion of the design to be cut. Let's click the reset button to return to the original panel. This feature can be used mostly for larger jobs that need to be split up because it either makes the installment of the design more manageable or because the design size is much larger than the cutter so it has to be split up. To see how this panel tab is really useful, let's return to the general tab. Increase the size of the job design so that it is larger than the actual media itself. Notice how Cutting Master 4 automatically panels the job based upon the size of your media. This shows why it is important to make sure that our media is set to the actual media size loaded in our cutter. What's convenient is that from here, we can readjust the panels so that they fit better for our job design. For instance, here we have made it so that the panels are not splitting the text on the right. We can panel the job design even further in case we feel that further paneling is needed. If we double click on a panel, it will disable it and prevent it from being cut. Let's reset the paneling 
and return to the General tab to restore the original size by entering 100%. The next tab is where options for cutting can be configured. For instance, options such as Advance After Plot can be enabled, which advances the media on the cutter beyond the cut job so that a new job can be sent. Set the weed border options, such as the horizontal and vertical weed lines, which find spots where cut lines can be placed for easier weeding. The last tab contains options when using registration marks. Let's return to the general tab and go over some of those settings. As mentioned earlier, it's important to set the media size correctly since it can help get an idea of how the job design will lay out. To change the medias, there are several options. First, we have this list of media size presets. There are also options to set a custom size when choosing User Defined. When selected, this will allow us to change both the width and height of the media just below. We can also just choose Roll, which sets the media size to the largest area of the cutter. But if we want the exact size of the cut area of our cutter, Clicking Poll Size, which is the button just to the right side, it will obtain this information. Below the Media Size options are the Job Size options. Here you can set the size either by actual dimensions or by percentage, as was done a few moments ago. Once again, each change that is made to these values is reflected in the Media Display area. As the size values are adjusted, they are kept in proportion. That is because the proportional is enabled. Unchecking this will stretch the job design accordingly if we change the design size. Fit to Media does just that. It fits the entire job design to the media proportionately. Just below that are values that can adjust the position of the job design relative to the media size. The position can be adjusted both by value or visually by dragging the job design. If this button, Interactive, is engaged, as the job design is repositioned, the tool head on the cutter will also move to that position. The button next to the Interactive button is basically a Show Me button where, when clicked, will move the tool head in a rectangular pattern showing the actual size the design will be on the cutter. For a moment, let's reduce the size of the design to a more manageable size. These next buttons will orient the job design to the media. For instance, the first button, when clicked, shows four choices of different positions that the job design will be placed relative to the media size. The next button will rotate the job design to four main angles. The last button will mirror the job design in cases where the design is destined to be placed on the inside of a window. This next section allows multiple copies to be placed. We can also set the spacing between each copy. The Reset button will return all the settings back to the original values. The Selection Only button will display only the objects that were selected with Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. Let's go back to Adobe Illustrator and select just the G in the word GraphTech and return to Cutting Master 4. Notice that when Selection Only is enabled, only the G appears since it was the only object selected in Adobe Illustrator. Of course, disabling it will show the whole job design. Hold On List will hold the job in the Cutting Master 4 queue when the job is sent, rather than sending it directly to the cutter. This is useful when you don't want the job to be sent directly to the cutter due to perhaps the media has yet to be loaded on the cutter. These buttons down in the left corner help to navigate the media display area.
Let's send the job and enable hold on list to demonstrate how it works. We can now click send again, and then switch to the Cutting Master 4 queue. Here we can see our job on hold in the queue. To send the job to the cutter, we just have to click on the send button at the top. We can go back to the cut plot window and click done to get back to Adobe Illustrator.